today I'm going to speak to you about the way to the top of the mountain. I've got a few surprises for you. Um, not now, otherwise it wouldn't be a surprise. I'll, it'll come. So, one of the great, um, one of the great, um, let's see. One of the great men of God was a guy called Moses. In fact, the Bible says that nobody, there was no, uh, at the end of the Torah, the, the first five books of the Bible, it says there was no, one, no prophet like Moses because he spoke to God face to face. But um, he, and, and to be honest, God really handpicked him. He, he was the only one of his generation to survive because all of the other babies of his, his age were, were murdered. And um, then he ended up in Pharaoh's court, and he was given the finest education, the finest of everything. And then he did, a terrible, then he did something. He murdered an Egyptian, and he had to flee. And he, and he went to the back of beyond, deep into, into the wilderness. And there he got married, and... And um, it's there that God got hold of him. So let's pick up the story from when God gets hold of Moses. So in Exodus 3, verse 1 to 3, it says, One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, the priest of Midian, sorry. He led the flock um, far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of the bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. Now, Moses was there in the middle of the wilderness, and this, this bush keeps burning and burning and burning, and he goes over to it, and when he gets there, he, he finds Jesus. So Jesus, Jesus again comes and heads, headhunts him and says, I'm speaking to you. And in the middle of the wilderness, he's going nowhere. I don't know, I, I've never tended a flock uh, of anything, but I don't, I don't know if any of you have. Um, I, uh, I, a friend of mine um, was, he's a farmer who was telling me how he had this goat and how he loved the goat and how he took the, 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 he took the um, goat to the vet when it got sick and eventually he buried it. And there was an Isikosa friend of mine standing by and I turned to him and, I, and he, you could see all over his face, bury the goat? And I'd say to him, I... Kaya, these are lungus. Because he had grown up herding goats. Basically, you sit there and watch them eat. I would have been a terrible goat herd because I would have got bored after a few minutes and I would have, I don't know what I'd have done. But anyway, don't put me in charge of a flock of goats. So Moses is there and he comes across this burning bush and God speaks to him out of it. And God says, I want you to bring your people back here. Now, where here is is very important. Because a lot of people don't know that the burning bush was out on Mount Sinai. And the reason why is because that mountain has two names. Mount Sinai and Mount Horeb. So God says, but so he's protesting Moses says, I can't do this. I've got a terrible Egyptian accent. They won't listen to me. No one will listen to me. I'm a this, I'm a that. And, and I think it's seven times God calls him and seven times he refuses. And then, and then it says, but Moses protested to God. Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you. And this is the sign that I'm the one who sent you. When you've brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. What mountain was it? Mount Sinai, the site of the burning bush. So, 
So now you know you 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 know when you, in in the movies when there's like a long piece and they have to rush through it. Often there are people running in slow motion during that piece. I won't be running in slow motion. But the bottom line is, a, a whole long while later, Moses gets them back to the mountain. And we pick up the story there again. Um, Exodus 16, 19, verse 1 and 2 says, Exactly two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. Sinai, probably better pronunciation, after breaking camp at Rephidim. They came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp there at the base of Mount Sinai. Sinai. So after all the ten plagues and all, and all the drama, let my people go, Moses pulls off what God had told him to do originally. Come and worship at this mountain. And so Moses, they, they get to the, the camp and Moses goes off and let's read Exodus um, 19, 3 to 4, it says, Then Moses climbed the mountain to appear before God. The Lord called, called to him from the mountain and said, Give these instructions to the family of Jacob. Announce it to the descendants of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. You know how I carry you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you will obey me and keep my covenant... You will be my own special treasure from among all the people on the earth. All of the earth belongs to me, and you will be my kingdom of priests, my holy nation. This is the message you must give to the people of Israel. So what was God's intention when they pulled up at Mount Sinai? His intention was that they be a kingdom of priests. Not Moses. Not Aaron, all of them. Every single one of them was to be a priest. So, why did God, what was God's plan? Well, if you go back to Genesis 12, 2 and 3, he says, I'll make you, he says to Abraham, who was their father, their, their ancestor, I will make you into a great nation, I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the nations on the earth will be blessed through you. So the God's plan was that there not be a priesthood, but there be a nation of priests. And that nation of priests, their purpose was to do what? To bless all the nations of the earth. And the reason that, that and, and when Moses goes up the mountain and asks God, what do you want to do? He says, I want to make you a kingdom of priests. Now, are you with me so far? Okay, now I'm going to do an interlude now. We're going to come back to Moses, but I need to give you a bit of background so that you can understand the rest of what I have to say. So are you following me? We're stepping out of, we're stepping out of Moses' story. We get, I'm giving you some background information, and we're going to step back into Moses' story um, soon. I see Charlene is understanding what I've said, so thank you, Charlene. I hope the rest of you are following me. So remember that the temple of Solomon and the tabernacle of Solomon was made, out of, made up of three parts. The, uh, there was the, the court where everyone could go, there was the holy place, and then there was the holy of holies. So how many, how many parts did the tabernacle or temple have? Three. Did I hear three? I heard like a, like a rumbling in the distance. Online, help these guys. How many parts did the temple have? Now, a little while ago, I showed you that, that Eden and even the, the land was built as a temple. So, so Eden was three parts as well because there was the land of Eden, there was the world, there was the land of Eden, and then there was the Garden of Eden. Or you, you can say, actually, there was Eden, there was the land of 
um, there, there was Eden, there was the garden, and there was the trees. So we see that, that, that Eden was a temple. Why? Because it had three parts. But what I want to show you is that Sinai was also a temple. Because the Bible speaks of, Exodus speaks of the foot of the mountain. Then there was the middle of the mountain. And then there was the top of the mountain. So what am I preaching about? I'm preaching about the way to the top of the mountain. So what is the top of the mountain in Mount Sinai? It's the holy place. Why? Because that's where God pitches up. In the temple, there was the Shekinah glory that, would, that, that was in, the, in the, the Holy of Holies. There was a manifestation of God himself over the, the, that, the golden box, the Ark of the Covenant. If you don't know what that is, it's the, the box that Indiana Jones tried to find. And um, so, okay, we're stepping back. Uh, you, have you got that? So Sinai is set up as a temple. Because actually, really, the temple was patterned on Eden. We think that the Eden was patterned on the temple. But if you read in your Bible, what comes first, Eden or the temple? Eden. So the temple followed the pattern of Eden. The Sinai followed the pattern of Eden, and then the tabernacle and the temple followed the pattern of Sinai. So, so Moses returned from the mountain, and he, we're back into the Moses story now. Moses returned from the mountain and called together the elders of the people and told them everything the Lord had commanded him. And all the people responded together. What did they respond? We so far, so good. Would you agree with me? I mean, he's, they've pulled off the, the great escape out of Egypt. They've gone through they've all kinds of miracles. And now they're back to where they've arrived at where God, exactly where God wants them. And then God says, I'm going to make you a kingdom of priests. And they say, fine by us. We're ready to go. And so, and then the, then the Lord, so Moses climbs up the mountain again. He was a fit old man. And the, actually he was fit middle-aged man at that stage. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will come to you in a thick cloud. Moses, Moses, so the people themselves can hear me when I speak with you. Then they will always trust you. So I want them around. I'm coming. I'm going to speak in a, in a, come in a thick cloud, and they will hear you and me chatting, and they'll always know that you are a prophet, that you, hear, that, that you are a friend of God. Still, so far, so good. Then God gave an instruction. He said, Mark off the boundary all around the mountain. When the people, uh, warn the people, be careful, do not go up onto the mountain or even touch its boundaries. Anyone who touches the mountain will certainly be put to death. No hand may touch the person or animal that crosses the boundary. Instead, step, stone them or shoot them with arrows. They must be put to death. So he's saying, don't go into the temple. For three days, and as we'll see, for three days, we will prepare, you will prepare, as we'll see. But I, let's read that last sentence very carefully. However, when the ram's horn sounds a long blast, then the people may go up on the mountain. Where were the people supposed to go to? To the top of the mountain. Their purpose was, so he said, don't come on until you're ready, and when you are ready, you can come. You can come to the top of the mountain. So Moses went down to the people. He consecrated them for worship, and they washed their clothes. He told them, get ready for the 
third day. What's going to happen on the third day? The trumpet is going to sound, and they're going to the top of the mountain. So on the morning of the third day, thunder roared and lightning flashed, and a dense cloud came down on the mountain. There was a long, long blast from a ram's horn. And all the people trembled. So there was this big, long blast. Long blast. On the ram's horn. And what happened to the people? What did they do? They trembled. What were they meant to do? They were meant to climb the mountain. In fact, uh, Moses led, he, then Moses led them out from the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. All of Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord had descended on it in the form of fire. So what was God asking them to do? He was asking them to walk into the fire at the top of the mountain. That was what he was asking them to do. And all um, the smoke billowed into the sky like smoke from a brick kiln, and the whole mountain shook violently at the, at the blast of the ram's horn. It grew louder. And louder. Moses spoke and God thundered his reply. And we jump to chapter 20, which carries on the story. When the people heard the thunder and the loud blast of the ram's horn. When they saw the flashes of lightning and the smoke billowing from the mountain, they stood at a distance, trembling with fear. What were they meant to do when the, the ram's horn sounded? Climb the mountain. So this wasn't why, why I've got James to do this again and again, is that the, the, the ram's horn sounded again and again and it grew louder and louder. And instead of going up the mountain, they stepped back further and further from the mountain, from fear. I think this must have been one of the saddest, most poignant moments in the whole Bible. God was calling his people to come be a kingdom of priests. And the ram's horn rang out again and again and again and again. And the people just trembled. Thank you, James. And so the people who should have gone up in the mountain stepped right back from the mountain. How sad that God called them and instead of responding, they ran away in fear. Can you imagine the, 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 the hurt in God's heart? He called his people and they, they just didn't come. Just didn't come. Called a love. Any of you ever called a loved one and they just didn't come? This is a whole nation that he was going to make priests. And so, and they said, so we will die. They didn't trust God. Why did God want to speak to them? Because he wanted to bless them. They let their fear, 
their anger, their, their inferiority. When God called, what did, they, what did they do? They trembled with fear. And they said, Moses, you go talk to God. Up you go the mountain. We're staying right here. We're not going into the temple. We're not going into the presence of God. We will not be priests. You're going to be a priest for us. Don't be afraid, Moses answered them, for the Lord has come in this way to test you and so that your fear of him will keep you from sinning. So God was, had a purpose. If you fully experienced God and his presence and his awesome power, they would change. As the people stood in the distance, Moses approached the dark cloud where God was. And so Moses goes up the mountain. But there was a people about a, at one and a half thousand years later, 1,300 years later, who had walked with God, had met God. And so in Acts chapter 2, there was a repeat, but this time they didn't run away. It says, suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of tongues of fire, remember the fire, walk into the fire, appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So, so obviously, how do, we, how do we take this? Because they then went on to transform the world, and we are here today because those 120 people were willing to stay in the fire when God called out to them and said, I want to make you a kingdom of priests. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people for me. It's because they were willing to stay in the fire. They were willing to not, they were willing to come to God. They weren't frightened. They didn't run away from God. And so, I want to show you the effect of people not running away from those that our city was running out of water and there'd be no water in the catchment area. And on Wednesday night, Prophet Richard Gray moved in the Holy Spirit and people started speaking in tongues. Especially lots of kids got filled with the Holy Spirit. They decided, those kids also decided not to run away from God, but to go into the fire and experience the, the fullness and truth of God. And then, and then, we decided to shout. We decided to bring the presence of God down into our city. Let's play it. And, and you say, well, that's crazy. But that was running into the presence of God, running into the fire of God. And I want to show you the result of people who are willing to go run into the fire. Let's play the video. Have uh, we got the video of the, um, have we got the video of all the rain? The, the, um, and we saw rain all over our region in a place called Krakil Hook. Krakil Hook. Next video. Um, it, it, it Krakil Hook. There was a hundred, which is part of our ca catchment area. There was a hundred and eighty millimeters of rain that fell. In, Yobit, in Ubertina, there was something like 50 millimeters of rain. And so, 
Can we play the, the, the last video on the slide? Um, I don't know if we do, but the, the point is, is that the river banks, the, 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 river, the, the river banks absolutely filled up and the, the water came pouring down into our catchment area. Now, am I saying that... This is the water of the water. This is our river, which is 130 mm. This is what you see in the media. Let's, if we can, get to the next video on the next slide. Um, I want to show you more water. In, in P, we love to watch water now. <laughs> Rivers. <laughs> Gets us excited. Um, but the point is, is that was Wednesday night, and the rain came on Thursday morning. When you go into the presence of the Lord, breakthrough happens. When you go into the presence of the Lord, when you're willing to go to the top of the mountain, when you're willing to go into the holies of holies, when you're not scared of what other people think of you, when you're not scared, then God can turn you into a priest. Isn't that awesome? And that's all going into the Churchill Dam, which feeds my water, so I'm pleased to see that. <laughs> but the point is, is that you, as a people, we can't stand quietly, stand back when the presence of the Lord moves. We can't be like Israel. When God calls us to the top of the mountain, the Holy of the Holies, we need to go there. Because he wants to fellowship with us and turn us into a kingdom of priests that the whole world can be blessed through. And so, what does it say? Genesis 22, verse 14. Abraham said, On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. A lot of you are battling with finances, you're battling with health, you're battling with circumstances, you're battling with family. But you, on the mountain of the Lord, in the Holy of Holies, when you experience the fullness of God, it will be provided. What's it? Finances. Some of you battling with depression, discouragement, hurt, anger, depression, um, broken family. On the mountain of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, it will be provided. Don't be like those people. When the trumpet sounds, you run away. I want to pray for those who haven't come into a close relationship with the Lord. I want to pray for you. If you've heard about the Lord, you've even come to church, but you've never experienced the Jesus as your Savior. Jesus, the one in, that lives inside of you. Jesus, the one who transforms your life. I want to pray for you personally. And I ask everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes. If you, if the Lord, if the Lord is speaking to you, you're, and, and you're hearing that trumpet blast, Are you running away or are you coming to Jesus? I want you to pray. I want to pray for those personally who God's speaking to. To do that, I need you to raise your hand now and say, I need prayer. I need to come into relationship with the Lord. The, I, the trumpet has sounded. I need to hear that. I need to do I need to come. I need to go up to the mountain, the top of the mountain. I need the presence of the Lord in my life. Please raise your hand now and say, pray for me personally. From the gallery down here, I, I want, I, 
He just wants to be with you. Please raise your hand. Online. Type, I'm going. I'm going to the top of the mountain. Okay, I'm going to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you that your trumpet has sounded and you're calling us to the top of the mountain. I thank you, Father, that, you, that we will, that we're, as we hear it, we will go into your presence. Help us not to be afraid. Help us not to be dis, dismayed. Help us not to run away. But as the presence, as you call us into your presence, as you call us to be a kingdom of priests, I pray that we will, that we will grab hold of that. I want to thank you, Lord, for all the people in, in this house and online who've, who want to serve you, follow you, and go into the presence of the Lord. I ask you to help them to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So before we close, I need to remind you of the holiday club it starts tomorrow morning 6 to 13 I need uh, and then tonight we're going to be launching another prayer tank the prayer tank is where we put you put names in and you pray for them and I think it's in um, the end of August I th we're going to have a coming home Sunday again we added more than 40 people to the church the last time and um, I know that you want to see your city and your and your saved and transformed. I know that you want to see the presence of the Lord in every street in our city. And so we're going to put together a campaign. We're starting a campaign to win to see people one for Jesus and serving Jesus. Um, and I want to so I want to encourage you to tune in at seven o'clock tonight. Um, where the litters um, are going to be um, talking about the connect group and I want to encourage you to, enjoy, to join a connect group. Um, the last thing we need to do is pray for our streets. So let's everybody, let's stand up and online if you can reach out to your street and let's pray for our streets. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Lily Avenue and William Moffat. I pray, Father God, that you, I pray, Father God, that your presence will be manifested in those streets. I pray, Lord Jesus, that they will hear the trumpet sound in those streets, that they will, be, they will hear your call to come and bring, and, and to, to bring people, Father God, to, to come and experience your presence. I thank you, Father, that you, you have a plan and purpose and that you are going to touch people. We speak the peace of God upon our upon our. Upon our congregation upon our building and land upon our streets lord jesus let your peace reign now bless our congregation make them on fire for you in jesus name amen we back to connect groups this week please get into your connect group the presence of the lord is touching and changing the pastors that were that were here this week were blown away by what they're doing and we're trusting that they're gonna, we're going to work together with them to roll it out across the whole of Africa. So bless you and see you in Connect Group this week. Amen.